and welcome to the Cellar Door Last Drinks. I'm George and I'm here at Lorraine Distillery to have a look at their beautiful estate and taste some of their delicious drinks. Let's go. So Jo, you are the head distiller here at Lorraine Estate Distillery. Tell us a little bit about how you became a head distiller. Yeah, so um, it's going back about just over 10 years now. Um, when I was in high school, I kind of needed a summer job. <laughs> and my dad was the sales and marketing manager out at Lark Distillery. Um, so there I was, basically, filling bottles by hand and putting on labels. That's a pretty um, cool job for a 16 year old. <laughs> yeah, and it's kind of funny looking back now, it's the jobs that I just hate doing now. So, oh, really? Yeah, you kind of graduate up. So. Mm -hmm. um, and you did, you graduated up quite quickly. Yeah, so after about two summers, Bill Lark offered me an apprenticeship. You were instrumental in developing Larrany. Yeah, yeah, so out at Larrany, initially we developed the Van Diemen's gin, mm -hmm. the Settler's gin, and the St. Clair vodka. Mm -hmm. uh, and then over the next year, then we brought out the Highlands gin and the cold brew coffee liqueur. So something you get to do here is basically use all of the ingredients in your distilling from your immediate vicinity. Yeah, exactly right. So, you know, we're talking about taking inspiration from um, not only the estate itself, um, but what's in the immediate area, and then sort of working out further to what's in Tasmania, mm -hmm. and then what's the best in Australia. Mm -hmm. um, so when we can, we source as close to the farm as we can. Because um, you've got your own barley here. Yeah, exactly right. Which is quite so, rare. Yeah, for mm. the whiskey, um, we're actually growing our own barley. Mm -hmm. um, we've had two successful crops, um, and that goes towards our estate whiskey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so as well as the barley being from the estate, um, we've got the Derwent River, which runs you know, 100 metres yeah, away. It's like right there. <laughs> Sometimes during winter, when it's rained a little bit more, it's more like 50 metres away. So. Yeah, we uh, take all of our water, comes from the Derwent, um, which flows down from Lake St. Clair, which is where the vodka gets its namesake from, and mm -hmm. some of the purest water in the world. Yeah. yeah. So do you want to talk us through the range? Yes. We'll start with our vodka. Mm -hmm. Where we kind of draw the inspiration from the farm, very bravely, I went into Mary's uh, rose garden. <laughs> and Is that something you're not supposed to do? If you saw the rose garden, you would see how brave it is. Um, yeah, it's very well manicured. Went in there, you know, we wanted to make a vodka that was very fresh, very much a sipping vodka, even, dare say, one for a martini. Mm -hmm. It's got rose petals from the garden, as well as fresh lemon peel and a little bit of thyme, just give it a bit of herbal notes. Mm. And then where would you move to traditionally from there? So moving on, we would start with the Highlands gin. Mm -hmm. So that's at 40%. Um, alcohol by volume, so that's the lowest of our current gins. Mm -hmm. And this one is quite special in the sense that uh, we're trying to capture that really crisp Highlands air. So what we've distilled into that is a conifer needle, which um, juniper is actually a part of that family of tree. Is it? So it's got that really pininess, but when you use too much juniper in a gin, it will get too dry. Mm -hmm. um, and kind of stick at the back of your palate. Whereas just using the conifer needle, it gives you that really fresh pine aroma. Mm. Alongside that, we've got fresh mint, um, pink grapefruit, a little bit of black pepper and chamomile. Next off the rank, we'd probably go to the Van Diemen's gin. Mm. So this is our widest range gin. So different bars around the country, bottle shops, uh, you know, your big bottle shops too. Mm -hmm. They'll pretty much all have the Van Diemen's. It's a bit punchier, so 
bit more intensity in the flavors. But what we do um, to kind of incorporate the area for this one is we take fresh strawberries, which are grown um, at a farm uh, just on the way out to the distillery. I mean, also in there we've got um, fresh and dried citrus peel to mm -hmm. give it a bit of complexity. Pink peppercorns, um, fennel seed, and vanilla, so. Yum. Yeah, it's kind of a bit like a fruit punch, mm. yeah. A very refined fruit punch. Exactly right, <laughs> yes. And then for those who have a little bit of a sweet tooth or maybe need a little bit of a morning pick-me-up <laughs> after a, a tasting session, <laughs> yeah, that's right, or you know, keep the session going, we've got our cold brew coffee liqueur. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we do the cold brew method ourselves. We work with a local coffee roaster to get us sort of a specification for beans that gives us a nice full strength of the coffee flavor, but less bitterness. Mm -hmm. And then we add vanilla, toasted wattle seed, nutmeg, and cinnamon. And then instead of just using a regular old sugar syrup, uh, we use a local honey. Oh, so wow. trying to get that area mm. incorporated into that. Yeah, Feels you're really a, capturing like very specific pockets of yeah. where you are in each bottle, aren't Well, you? there's not a lot of coffee being grown out here, so it was sort of, we had to look to where, where to kind of kind of get some of the local terroir in there. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, so it came from the bees. Excellent, thanks bees. Mm -hmm. uh, shall we sample? Shall, so mm -hmm. I think, start with the Van Diemen's gin. Mm -hmm. So this is our Sunday afternoon this is our... This isn't a Sunday afternoon. No, nah, sort of an any time. Oh, it can be Sunday <laughs> afternoon. It can be Sunday morning or late Saturday night. Um, yeah, so... So for traditional palettes, this is your take on a traditional botanical gin? The sort of the classifications at the moment, um, because you've got so many different distilleries doing mm. gins and different interpretations of what's traditional mm -hmm. and what's contemporary Australian and things like that. We wouldn't call this a traditional London dry gin. It is definitely juniper forward, but there's so many other sort of unusual uh, botanicals in there that we would, we would call it an Australian contemporary. You know, as Aussies do, we tend to kind of bend the rules a little bit, <laughs> especially when it's something coming from England. It worked quite well for you though. This recently won. Yeah, so it was it won, double gold? Uh, so the settlers won double gold at the San Francisco uh, Spirit and Wine Awards. That's a lot of gold. Yes, yeah. Just I can't wear all the medallions, <laughs> or get, I get a backache. Um, but yeah, the um, the Van Diemen's it won a gold in mm -hmm. its category. So not quite. Not double, uh, but it's still its, pretty good. As its big brother, but <laughs> it's okay. Mm. You get that herb on the nose just before you. Mm. Yes, yeah, so you get that that fennel, mm. and it's not overpoweringly aniseedy. It's just like there's a little bit. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's and it's there just to complement that um, kind of the sweetness of the fruit, uh, and as well as that nice kind of vanilla finish. Mm. Having it in a gin and tonic, slicing up some fresh strawberries in there. Mm. Yeah, really opens it up. And it's just a funny thing when you're tasting, um, yeah, when you have people coming out to do a spirit tasting and things like that, 90% of the time, they're probably not drinking it straight anyway. Mm -hmm. So it's a very interesting world, especially when we're talking judging and things like that. Mm. Yeah. Okay, and next on our run? Next, we'll switch over to something different. Mm -hmm. We'll. Uh, Bit of a try of the coffee liqueur. So, aside from a morning pick-me-up, you could pop this in an espresso martini. You or... certainly could. The most popular cocktail of the last few years. <laughs> um, yeah, espresso martini, white Russian, makes a really good affogato. Yeah, we do the, the uh, farm gate markets every fortnight down here. Mm -hmm. And the lady mentioned that she made a tiramisu with it. So, I was... I was a bit confused why she hadn't brought me. Uh, yeah, I know, yeah. it's just rude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that coffee is so good. You can taste that honey. Mm. Provides like a nice silkiness. Mm. Um, instead of just using a straight cane sugar, it's which almost gentle. kind of burns the mm. throat. Yeah, uh, it was 
a very really challenging one for me because, uh, admittedly, I never really thought I'd woke up one day in my career and go, I'm going to make a coffee liqueur. <laughs> so, much to my own detriment, I probably over-engineered this one, but I think <laughs> I think it pays off because I like yeah. to drink it. So. Yeah, oh, great. Me too. Joe, thank you so much. You're very welcome. Mm, well done, congratulations. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Anytime. <laughs>